This is the new 2023 Genesis G90, and it's the flagship luxury car from Genesis, which is Hyundai's premium luxury brand. Now, Genesis may not exactly be a household name, but this car is a big deal. It is an ultra luxury sedan intended to rival the Mercedes-Benz S-Class with a sticker price of over $100,000. And today, I'm going to review it and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this Rivian R1S, the new Rivian SUV sold for over $130,000. This fantastic Shelby GT350R sold for over $77,000. And this wonderful Audi RS5 sold for just over $55,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. You can buy or sell cool cars and list your car for free on Cars and Bids. All right, time for the quirks and features, the new Genesis G90. And I'm gonna start with getting in, which means starting with the key, which is this strange thing, this odd white bulgy thing, almost looks like a soccer ball, except without any of the black spots, definitely unusual. But anyway, you have the key in your pocket, you walk up to the car, you tap on the door handle, and then it pops out, as you can see, allowing you access to the car. Now, that's not all that unusual, but what happens next is you pull on the door handle and the door electronically pops open a few inches automatically and then you open it up from there. There's a little electronic popper that makes it a little bit easier to open up the door to get inside. Now that's kind of a neat trick but once you get inside it gets even cooler. Specifically you get in, sit down and then press this button on the inside of the door and the door automatically closes. That's right like a Rolls Royce Phantom the door closes automatically so you don't have to lower yourself to pulling the door closed like you would in some plebeian non-Genesis G90. Very cool. And the cool continues from there. We're in the back seat, and there is a lot of nice luxury back here. Although the first thing you notice when you climb inside is it's huge back here. Massive interior room, leg room, knee room, headroom. It's all back here. This truly feels like the flagship full-size luxury sedan that it is, which I guess is no real surprise. But the real fun in the back seat of this car comes when you lower the center armrest. That's when you discover an enormous amount of controls for all sorts of different features back here and a center touch screen built into the rear armrest that allows you to control even more items. One thing I like about this center touch screen is the pictures that it displays which almost have nothing to do with the car. For example, the shades image is not the sun shades that it controls but rather blinds and a house, actual shades. And the lighting image doesn't show like vehicle lighting on the inside, but instead a lamp. <laughs> which is kind of funny. Then how about the massage tab, which is an image of a feather, because that's how the massage in a Genesis will feel. <laughs> but anyway, that screen allows you to control all sorts of different stuff. Now, as for the stuff you can control, a lot of the usual luxury car items back here, heated and cooled rear seats, rear climate control, that sort of stuff. But I am going to call out a few specifically interesting quirks and features. For one thing, as part of the controls in the center area, you have extra door buttons in here. So if you don't want to reach all the way onto the door panel to press and have the door close automatically, just tap this button here and you can see that that also will close the door automatically. So you can just get inside, press the button, and you don't even have to reach out, which is pretty nice. Next up, another nice feature back here is the massaging rear seats. Heated and cool. A lot of luxury cars have that, but a rear seat massage is rare. This car has it, and the massage is very intense. You can choose between several different types when you're sitting back here, different ways you can get massaged. 
montage as you're driving along in your Genesis. And next up, another interesting quirk of the back seat in this car, you can adjust the radio for the entire vehicle. That's not all that surprising. This car is kind of meant for chauffeur-driven passengers, so of course the rear seat passenger is the important one. The weird thing here though is you adjust the radio in the front screen by using the control in the rear screen. You can see I'm twisting this center control here, and that is adjusting the radio and the screen in front. It doesn't show on this rear screen, so you kind of have to have good eyesight, but you're basically controlling the radio, the media for the entire car from back here, and you're adjusting that front screen from the back, which is interesting. Next up, another interesting adjustment in back, you can change the warmth level of the interior ambient lighting. A lot of cars allow you to turn it on and off or brighten and dim, but here you can change it from like very bright white light to sort of a warmer, softer yellow light. Don't think I've seen that in any other cars. It lets you kind of set the mood of the interior ambient lighting. And speaking of the mood in the car, you can also adjust the fragrance. Some new luxury cars offer fragrances in the interior. It comes through the climate vents, and this is one of them. And back here, you can choose the amount of fragrance that comes through, and also you can choose between fragrances. And you can see, unlike in Mercedes-Benz, where the fragrances have simple names like vanilla or cinnamon, here they have rather unusual names like My Favorite Place and The Driver's Awakening. <laughs> Very strange, not exactly sure how that smells, but you can try it out and adjust it from the back of your G90. And next up, some other notable items back here. For one thing, the seats can adjust forward, backward, up, down, the backrest can move like you would see in a normal car's front seats. You can do that in the G90's rear seats for your optimal luxury and comfort in back. And speaking of rear seat comfort, you also have a pillow on the headrest back here. The Genesis logo is embossed into this Alcantara fluffy pillow, which is very luxurious and very nice in the back. And another nice luxury touch you probably don't have in your car is this little pocket next to the seat, which is there, I guess, for you to stick reading material. The day's newspaper, perhaps. You're being chauffeured along, you get inside the car, and your chauffeur has already placed the New York Times right next to you so you can read it while you're being driven to the office. So those are the quirks and features of the rear seat. Now it's time to climb out, which you do by pressing the button on the door. Push that and the door opens up a couple of inches so you don't have to unlatch it and then you push it open the rest of the way and climb right out. Very luxurious. Man, next up we move up front to the G90 where you will once again find all of the same door tricks you had in back, meaning you climb inside and you press this little button here in the center console, push it, and the door automatically closes. You can do that on both driver and passenger side, automatic closing doors, which is a pretty cool luxury touch. But anyway, once you've closed the doors, you take a second to look around and you'll notice this interior is very, very beautiful. High quality materials everywhere, very nice stuff, very nice design, really a gorgeous luxury car interior. It fits a flagship luxury sedan, and it's certainly on par with rivals like the Mercedes S-Class, the BMW 7 Series, etc. Although, frankly, it should be on par with those rivals because now pricing is on par with those rivals. Check this out. The new redesigned 2023 Genesis G90 now starts around $90,000, which is a $15,000 increase over last year's outgoing Genesis and it makes the base price of this car more than the BMW 7 Series or the Lexus LS luxury sedan. Genesis is no longer the value player in this segment. They're aiming for the top dogs and they're pricing like it too. This particular G90 is equipped to just over $100,000, which is a lot of money for a vehicle from an upstart luxury brand, but that's where they're positioning it. And the interior kind of says that they're doing it right. But anyway, let's talk through the quirks and features up front in the G90, one of which is this little pad in the center console. That is a fingerprint reader. You climb into this car and you have all sorts of adjustable settings, but if you set a driver profile, you can link it to your fingerprint. Just put your fingerprint down and then all of your radio presets pop up, the positioning of the seats, the climate control, all goes to your liking because you've programmed your fingerprint to match your driver profile, which is pretty cool. And next up, another wonderful 
quirk in this interior. You get your drive mode button here on the center console, which is pretty standard. You tap that, you get eco, sport, comfort, all that stuff. But if you hold down the drive mode button, you enter chauffeur mode, which is a drive mode I haven't really seen before. That, according to Genesis, is specifically designed to tailor the suspension to make it comfortable for rear passengers in particular. So you turn that on if you're chauffeuring someone and you want to drive them in optimal comfort. And speaking of comfort, another interesting item in the G90 is a feature called the Mood Curator. You can find this in the infotainment system and allows you to select which mood you want while you're driving along. And you can choose between vitality, delight, care, and comfort. If you select any one of these moods, the car will then change all sorts of different systems at once to optimize for that mood. So it'll change the heated seats, the climate control, the music you're playing, the positioning of the sunroof shade, all that stuff at once to make it as closest to that mood as it can possibly get you in. Very interesting. Anyway, comfort is obviously a big emphasis here, and there's a lot more to talk about, including front massaging seats. In addition to the back, you can choose between various different massage programs that have a nice massage from your G90 while you're driving along. And front passengers can also control the fragrance in this car. You can see a simple control is here in the climate control screen. You just tap on the little fragrance icon to adjust the amount of fragrance that's coming out so your interior can smell as comfortable as it feels. But anyway, next up, speaking of screens in this car, I should talk about the technology. The infotainment system, the infotainment screen in the center, is excellent. You can use it as a touchscreen where it's very responsive, or you can control it with this center controller where it's also responsive and easy to figure out. Very intuitive, excellent touchscreen system. I only wish that the home screen was a little bit better. It's sort of esoteric and artsy, and I wish it had more info like most cars' home screens do, but that's my only real complaint about the center infotainment screen. Now, you also have a large screen directly in front of you, the gauge cluster screen, which is fine, but I wouldn't say great. It shows a lot of good information, but I wish it had more configurability. The only thing you can really change in this gauge cluster screen is this little box over on the right. And although you can adjust this to show exactly what you want to see, it's the only adjustment you can make. So stuff is competing. If you want to see navigation, you can't also see music, for example. If you want to see a trip odometer, you can't also see your phone, for instance. It just would be better if there was more configurability in that screen, and that's a little bit of a disappointment. With that said, this car does include the fantastic blind spot cameras you see in Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis models, and it's excellent. Turn on your turn signal, and it shows exactly what's in your blind spot on the side you're signaling, and it does it over on the other side as well. So you can basically see all around you to make lane changes, and it's really, really fantastic. It gives you an extra layer of safety and more visibility than mirrors or turning over your shoulder to have these cameras in there, and I love that feature. Now, speaking of safety systems on the road, the new G90 has an excellent driver assist technology. Automatic steering is fantastic, and it's a capacitive touch steering wheel, so you don't have to jiggle it to let it know you're there. You can just rest your hand on the wheel, and it will steer, brake, accelerate, do all the stuff you'd want on the freeway. It's great. It also will do lane changes. You put on the turn signal, and it will change lanes for you, which makes this one of the more advanced of these systems, because not all of them do that but great driver assist technology on the freeway in this car. Now, one interesting thing about the steering wheel is the way that it's shaped and how it looks. Just one giant spoke across the center, which is kind of odd. You have two button and switch control pads on either side, but then in the middle, there's this weird piece of, in this case, beige leather kind of tying it all together. It's definitely an unusual steering wheel situation, but that's what they've done in the G90. But anyway, next we move outside the new G90, and I want to talk lighting. More and more automakers are using exterior lighting to distinguish their cars from rivals, and Genesis is kind of leading that charge with some very distinctive lighting. We start in back, where you have two light bars going across the entire rear end of the car. Not just one, like basically everybody else has, but two rear light bars, which is kind of cool, but there's more. We then move on to the side, where you can see the turn signal also has two large bars on the side of the car. A lot of brands just integrate a side turn signal into a small part part of the mirror here, it's a design element, large and very obvious on the side. And then we move up 
front where the lighting gets really unusual. The headlights are really just a series of LED squares, not one big one, but like many, many little ones, as you can see. And when the turn signal turns on, about half of those LED squares temporarily flash orange instead of white to become the turn signal, and then they go right back to white. It is a very unusual lighting design up front and certainly very distinctive to this car, and that's what you have, some unusual lighting on the outside to make it look different. And next up, since we're up front, let's talk powertrain. The base level version of this car, which starts around $90,000, comes with a turbocharged V6 that makes 375 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. Or you can upgrade to this model, which starts around $100,000, and it adds a supercharger to all that. So it's turbo supercharged, and it has a mild hybrid system. This version has about 410 horsepower and about 405 pound-feet of torque, so relatively healthy numbers, although it's no big burly V8, but it gets decent fuel economy by being a V6 instead. Now, since we're up front, another distinctive element of the new G90 is the way it looks up front, specifically the giant front grille. This has the same shape as the grills in other Genesis models, but in this car, it's huge, and that's meant to signal that this is the flagship, top-of-the-line luxury Genesis model, and it has the big, huge grille to show that. And certainly, it is a large and rather distinctive item on the outside of this car. Other than that, though, I will say the styling in the new G90 is pretty understated. It looks luxurious, it looks expensive, looks very nice, but it's not shouty, it's not in your face, it's not over the top. An understated, luxurious luxury car. People have been complimenting me and telling me nice car as I've been driving this around, even though they probably don't really know exactly what it is. But it looks nice, and that's very clear on the outside. All right, driving the new Genesis this G90. Um, first thing you notice just when you walk up to this car, it is a boat. It's like 207 inches long. It is a big, full-size luxury sedan. And unlike some of its rivals, which are going for like a sportier direction, this car really isn't. That is clearly not Genesis's uh, ideal here. They want this to be a luxury car for people who want a luxury car. It definitely has more of an S-Class vibe than like BMW 7 Series or even the new Lexus LS, which is kind of pushed more in a sporty direction as well. And not only is that true from like a sizing and interior luxury and materials perspective, but it's also true from a driving perspective. I mean, it's very, very clear as you drive this car that it is, I would say, boat-like. Now, I don't want to use that phrase necessarily because it doesn't like, I, when I think of a car that's like a boat, it's an old, you know, slow handling American car that was just massive and hard to deal with. This isn't like that, but relative to modern cars, this does feel very, uh, compliant, very luxurious, very plush. Not The steering is not incredibly tight. That's not really the goal of this car, and that's not really what they've delivered. It feels luxury focused to the absolute max. And frankly, that's even true of acceleration and powertrain. This car, this is the top version with the turbo supercharged mild hybrid. <laughs> Um, and that powertrain, 410 horsepower, it's not an enormous, or 405 horsepower, it's not an enormous amount of power, but it's, it's enough to make the car behave as it's intended, which is luxurious, relaxing, plush, all of those things. It's not, I mean, I'm flooring it right now and it's quick, but the, it's clearly not like class leading. It doesn't even come close to rivaling like fast, big luxury sedans. That's not their intent with this car and that much is very clear. Now, while that's a drawback to car enthusiasts who enjoy a luxury car that's also a fast, fun, whatever, it's a nice thing for people who just want a luxury car and are noticing that more and more luxury cars are going in the sporty direction. Here's one that remains in the luxury realm. And that's how it feels on the road. This car is very nice, very calm, very comfortable, very supple, and it really feels fantastic. Now, like I said, steering not tremendously well connected, but very boosted, easy to turn the steering wheel, easy to send the car where you want to go, just not going to be spry or daring when you change directions. That's not what this car is about. It's nice, supple, relaxing cruiser, relaxing climate control, excellent seats. I mean, everything about this car is tuned for luxury, comfort. That's the main goal here. Now, as it relates to other luxury sedans, it's an interesting question. Um, Lexus LS, BMW 7 Series, Mercedes S-Class, Audi A8, those are its big rivals. 
And this segment is kind of shrinking. And I find it interesting that Genesis keeps pushing so hard on this segment, considering that flagship cars these days are more and more becoming SUVs, like the Range Rover, the G-Wagon, vehicles like that. But um, Genesis wants to have a true player in the luxury sedan world. How does it stack up? It's up there. I mean, it, I think it feels every bit as nice as the latest Lexus LS. I think it feels like the BMW 7 Series, every bit as nice as that. I don't think it's quite on par with the 7 Series in terms of the way that it rides, the way the doors sound when they shut, the way it looks, and of course, brand name. I don't think it's quite there, um, but it's really on that level, and it really does feel like a true, relaxing, full-size flagship luxury sedan. Now, the interesting thing is it's priced like one. This car used to be the bargain of this segment. Well, now it's priced actually pretty competitive with rivals, not undercutting them. And the result is it delivers in every way except the brand. And I think that obviously that's where this car is gonna have its real struggles, is that people are gonna have a tough time paying $100,000 for a largely unknown Genesis brand. And that's what we have here. As a car, this does a great job delivering just about everything you might want. Um, but people in this segment want something that shows off, that's kind of loud and, hey, I got an S class, and this isn't that. So it delivers the goods without the brand name, but it's quite impressive and quite nice in here. And so that's the new 2023 Genesis G90. This may not have the name recognition of a Mercedes S-Class or a BMW 7 Series, but it is a serious luxury sedan with some serious luxury features. And now it's time to give the new Genesis G90 the Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 61 out of 100. The new G90 beats out the old one, but it doesn't outshine its major competitors, the BMW 7 Series, the new S-Class, the new Lexus LS. It's not because of a fault with the car itself, as the G90 is wonderful, great luxury sedan with great tech and a nice driving experience. The problem is more about pricing, as this is now priced like a BMW or a Lexus, despite being a Genesis. It's a tough sell in a segment that's heavily brand focused, and I think that limits the G90's appeal, even though it's so nice.